The Great Barrier Reef's past can help us predict the future by looking at those periods in geologic history when the Great Barrier Reef has responded and evolved to rapid climate changes. In the face of future global climate change, there's uncertainty about the rate and magnitude of sea level rise, temperature changes, well as increases in sediment runoff. By looking at the Great Barrier Reef's geologic past, we can look specifically at those times in its history where it has grown and in some cases died in response to these environmental changes. We recovered tens of metres of core and brought back all of these core trays to the lab here and we start to examine the cores and see exactly what kinds of coral communities were growing at different times but not just the coral, also see what kinds of other plants and animals are growing at the same time in the cores that are preserved in this fossil record. Corals are really spectacular recorders of the climate or the ocean that they were growing in. And so we can take a small subsample and then we can measure a whole range of different elements and isotopes to reconstruct temperature, past salinity, sediment runoff. We're hoping to understand what combination of environmental factors has stressed the reef in the past, changed it, perhaps killed it um, and caused the demise of the reef. And this has happened again and again and again. And then that, that sort of goes to this idea that over scales of tens to hundreds of thousands of years, as an entire ecosystem, it's actually shown a, a pretty remarkable ability to, to respond to these major climate changes. The fear now is because of anthropogenic warming and associated climate changes, the key issue is the rate of, of some of these environmental changes is that, at least in the short term, we're compromising the ability of the reef to respond to these changes. And we may actually be hastening its death in the shorter term. I'm actually standing on this large circular structure, which is a dead coral, which has been dated um, to about uh, 2,000 years old. And these structures are called microatolls, and because this is old, this is actually a fossil microatoll. And these are, are really, really excellent um, indicators of the position of sea level. Sea level is a, is a major control on where and how reefs grow. If a sea level drops suddenly, the reef is exposed and it dies, and the ecosystem or the habitat must shift but the reef in that place can no longer um, grow. And so this is what we've seen happen. So basically the reef has shifted backwards and forwards, broadly tracking those major sea level and climate changes. But in that place where the, the current Great Barrier Reef is right now, the reef died completely and utterly. We've done a lot of work reconstructing where the reef was during the last ice age. The world was quite different. Sea level was about 120 metres lower. There was much, much more ice on the planet. And then because of natural global climate changes, the ice sheets started to melt, sea level began to rise. And, and so there were, were big temperature changes of maybe five, possibly six degrees uh, between about 20,000 years to 10,000 years ago. But that five, or six degree temperature rise was over 10,000 years. Now, we've already had almost a, a degree of rise in the last 100 years or so. And so it's really the rate of change, a, a much, much faster rate with respect to a temperature that, that, is, that is a problem. We're combining all of this data to build sophisticated computer models to predict the past growth of the reef in response to these climate changes. But more importantly, we're gonna use these computer models to hopefully make more informed predictions about the fate of the Great Barrier Reef in response to future global climate changes.